What's going on everybody? This is Barry Fields with Life with the Fields. And today I wanna to talk to you about content creation. And we all know that we are living in a creator's world today. Um, everybody has got the ability to create something no matter what field you're in, no matter what uh, your genre of music or, or area of expertise. I believe that there is a uh, aspect of content creation that goes along with every field of work. Uh, in area in every area of society and so you know I do want to say that even though we're going to be talking about camera gear and lenses today I do believe that you can create uh, some great content with your phone I have the iPhone 12 Pro Max this is a beast of a camera uh, beast for video and just for content creation purposes but there is nothing better than having a professional setup for content creation or just anything else that you want to do. Maybe you want to shoot your kids uh, as far as taking pictures of them while they're playing, uh, take pictures of your family, to take some video for memories. Um, these camera manufacturers and companies have made it convenient, even though it does come with a price tag, they have made it convenient for us to get professional quality results uh, without having to go uh, and go pay somebody buku amounts of money even though I'm a photographer myself I'm a photographer myself and uh, I do do video but I also believe that you know everybody should own a camera uh, for the purpose of just capturing moments those uh, moments in very high quality as best as we possibly can because those are memories that last a lifetime and so you know me and my wife we are in the content creation business I, I run a photography business and uh, my wife she's an influencer on social media uh, we decided to really go all in uh, on investing in some camera gear and some lenses uh, it started out as just kind of a hobby for me and then it just kind of grew into this you know but once when we really got into the business aspect and really got serious in the content creation field we decided to really take a leap and just invest in some um, some gear that we felt like would be the best for us I will say as a disclaimer that this this gear these lenses this camera you know this might not be the right setup for you in my opinion this is the best content creation uh, setup that in my opinion uh, that is out there right now um, this camera body is not particularly the one that I'm going to be talking about today. The one that I recommend is actually the one that I'm shooting on right now, and that is the Sony a7C. Uh, Sony a7C is a fairly new camera. It came out about six to seven months ago, and it is a beast of a camera. It is considered as the world's smallest full-frame camera, uh, 24 megapixels, and it is virtually the same uh, it has a lot of the same specs as the Sony a7 III, which was rated as one of the best cameras of 2018, and even still today considered as one of the top-notch cameras of today. I've had this camera, the a7 III, for about two years now, and this camera has um, been through many shoots and many shoots and weddings and uh, photography sessions and video sessions, and it has not failed me yet and I can say the same about the a7c uh, one thing I love about the a7c that this camera does not have that really made me pull the trigger on getting this camera and why I consider it as the best content creation camera uh, is for one for number one it is full frame and for two it has a flip out screen so I can see myself uh, when I was recording on this one I would have to use I would have to use a LCD monitor. Uh, I got one from, Feel, uh, Feel, I think it's Feel World or Free World. Yeah, I believe it's Free World. And uh, it was a great, great monitor, great setup, but it was really heavy, really bulky. And so, you know, it prevented me from really taking it out of the house and wanting to uh, take it other places. I took it a few places um, a few different times, but uh, it was just too bulky and it drew too much attention. Whereas with this camera, this camera is light. Uh, it's a light setup. It's got the flip out screen. It's a small camera body, small, compact, and it gives you the top notch quality of like the likes of you like your Sony a7 uh, III or some of your other camera bands from Canon and Nikon and Fuji. And so that is my recommendation 
uh, for those that are in the content creation field, especially if you're in it by yourself um, and you want to make sure that you're always in focus. Uh, the Sony a7C has a great autofocus system. Um, I have no doubts, even if I didn't have the flip out screen, I have no doubts as to whether I would be in focus or not because their system is just so great. Their autofocus system is so great. I believe it is the best in the business. And so uh, my recommendation for the camera is the Sony a7C once again. And I'm filming on a 35 mil 1.8. Uh, which this this lens is a great lens to have. I do believe that this lens is one of the best lenses for this camera body because it is small, it is compact, and it takes great photos. So that's the lens that I am uh, currently shooting on right now. That's the, the Sony 35mm 1.8. Uh, it is the smallest lens of the bunch, even though these lenses right here are not really that big, but that is definitely the smallest lens of the bunch. My next recommendation on the list would be the Tamron 17 to 28 2.8. The Tamron 17 to 28 2.8. Uh, this is a great wide angle lens. This lens goes for about $899. I'll put all the links to these in the description with the price points of them. But this lens goes for $899. And I know that sounds like it's a lot of money, but I'll tell you, this, this lens right here is definitely worth the money. Um, for, for quite some time, I would say probably over the last year, we have used this lens as a vlogging lens. Uh, we used it on the Sony a7 III. For vlogging, we used it on the Sony a6100, which is another camera that I have. And that was our content creation camera before I got this camera. Uh, on a APS-C body, this camera or this lens would be a, um, I believe it would be equivalent of about a 25 to 45 focal, millimeter focal length. But this lens here um, is a great lens uh, for wide angle shots of buildings, architectures, landscapes. Um, and it has a low f-stop of 2.8. It's not as low as the um, the other the other lenses that I'm going to recommend, but uh, this lens does get uh, pretty low and in low light on this camera here with the Sony a7C. Uh, you can get great quality images at night because this camera here is already great when it comes to low light sensitivity. And then you have the 2.8 aperture uh, that comes along with this lens right here. The next lens, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna I'm gonna do this one last, but if you are into portraits, uh, portraits, this lens right here will give you some beautiful, beautiful portraits. This is the 85mm 1.8 lens. Um, this lens, when it first came out, was rated as one of the sharpest lenses on the market. Uh, it is very, very sharp from edge to edge. It gives you a beautiful image right out, straight out of camera. Uh, renders beautiful colors. I would say it is the second sharpest lens that I have uh, in my whole kit that I have. I have other lenses that are not here, but this is probably the, this is the second sharpest lens that I have. And if you shoot JPEG, you, I have no doubts that you'll be able to shoot images straight out of camera off of this lens and post it right onto your social media accounts uh, right away and they will be, look stunning. This goes all the way down to a 1.8 aperture. They do have a G Master version of this lens. It goes all the way down to a 1.4, um, which it does re render beautiful, beautiful background bokeh. Uh, but for this one to be a 1.8 lens, this one gives beautiful image, completely blows out the background, melts it to where, I mean, you can barely tell what's behind the individual. And um, this lens is not as heavy as that lens is. And for content creation, you'll, most people, they're, they're on the go. They're going from one place to the next. And I would say for this lens right here, you know, this would be a better option for you than the uh, G Master 1.4 lens because of its size and its weight. And it still gives you uh, great, great, great images. This lens is 
uh, I think it retails at about $600. I was able to get mines on sale for about uh, $499. I caught it on sale for about $499 about a year and a half ago. And this lens is um, this lens is worth the pickup, and it is very 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 cheap uh, for the amount of quality that you get that you get out of this lens. The G Master edition of this lens is about seventeen or eighteen hundred dollars, I believe it is. For a third of the price, you're getting about eighty-five to ninety percent of the performance of the G Master lens, and so I most definitely recommend this lens here. And the last lens that I recommend is the 24 mil G Master 1.4. This lens right here is a beast. This lens right here is a beast. I have always been a fan of wide angle lenses. Um, for some reason, I'm drawn to them. I do have uh, some telephoto. <clears throat> I do have some telephoto lenses. Um, I have the Tamron 70 to 180. I have the uh, the mid-range Tamron, the 28 to 75, you know, and I have, of course, some primes, some medium telephoto primes like the 85 millimeter and so forth. But this lens right here gives you beautiful, beautiful, beautiful images, wide angle lim images uh, for portraits. It gives you great portraits. If you're a person that takes uh, a lot of pictures in the house and you don't have a whole lot of space, you don't have a whole lot of space in your house, but you want to take some beautiful, beautiful portraits. This lens right here is it. Um, there is another lens that is somewhat similar to this lens. Uh, it is the 20 mil 1.8 Sony G lens. Uh, I would say that this lens um, is most definitely the better lens. But if you're looking for a cheaper option, because this lens is about fourteen hundred dollars if you don't get it. Um, on catch it on sale. I was able to catch it on sale for twelve hundred dollars. But if you are looking, uh, if you look hard enough or you wait a little bit, you know, then you'll be able to catch it on some sales about for about twelve hundred. But the Sony Mil uh, one point eight G lens goes for about eight ninety nine, and it is just a little bit wider. It's a, it is a one point eight aperture, but this lens right here. Um, I would say this lens is most definitely the better lens. It has a aperture ring on the back, so you're able to manually uh, change your aperture from the lens, which is pretty cool. Um, this is actually my first lens where I have that ability to do that. And you know what? Since I have gotten this lens and have become accustomed to using this, I don't see how it went this long without it. Uh, but this is a great lens. It's got a manual focus on and off switch. It's got a focus hold button. And one thing I love about the 85 and the 35, they have that as well. They have the manual focus, auto focus switch. They have the focus hold button. Um, and so that's one thing that Sony does do a good job of even on their value lenses. Um, they tend to give some pro features that we all can really enjoy. But this right here, this this aperture ring uh, is pretty much reserved for the G and the G Master lenses. Even some of the G, G lenses doesn't have uh, this aperture ring right here, but the G Masters do. And so this is a great, great, great lens. If there's one lens that I would tell all content creators to invest in to go along with this camera and they'll have a setup that will do them great, uh, it is this lens right here. This lens is the probably the best lens for content creation that I would say because you can get portraits, you can do landscapes, you can vlog on it. Uh, it gives you that low f-stop of 1.4 aperture so you'll get the real blurry backgrounds when you're doing video or photos. I mean this lens can do it all. And uh, just if you for if you're one that does do video and you like to vlog yourself, um, Here's a here's a microphone that I would recommend. Uh, this is the Rode Video Micro, and I've had this lens. I've had this microphone for quite some time, and this microphone it has taken a beating. I mean, we've tossed it around and have and have really really uh, treated this microphone not the best, but it keeps on ticking. It is a great microphone to have and it pairs well with the Sony a7C. There's another microphone that's on the market that's probably a, a little bit better than this one. It is $50 more, 
and it is the uh, Deity Duo. I think it's D4 Duo, uh, where you're able to get you're able to get sound coming out of the front and the back of the lens of the microphone, uh, just in case you want to monitor yourself while you're talking to somebody while you're shooting or vice versa. So I think that's pretty cool. But this this microphone goes for about fifty to sixty dollars. Um, and it is a great microphone to have. Um, I would say this is most definitely a must have to go with the Sony a7C. And if you're a person that is debating on what kind of laptop you're getting, I'm going to probably do another video. Um, but if you're debating on if you should get a laptop or an iPad, I would recommend you go ahead and get an iPad. Now, I have the iPad Pro 12.9 inch with the Apple Pencil and the keyboard. Uh, this this is a great setup. I recommend this to most people as I tell most people that iPads iPad Pros and even the iPad Air is so great now that you don't necessarily need a laptop. Most people will do just fine with an iPad and this iPad is extremely fast and you can even get the basic $329 iPad and you will be very surprised at how fast it is and how much quicker it moves than a laptop. I do have an iPad Pro that's kind of sitting here off to the side. Uh, it has some notes for me set up. It has some notes set up for me, and it's great for live streaming and and some and for the most part some other things. But uh, for content creators, if you're just doing content creation for social media and you're not doing like super super high end professional projects, I will say for photos you can most definitely do high end client work with this. For video, for video you can, but for the ease of use. I would still recommend a laptop over this, but for content creation, I use an app called LumaFusion, and it does great. Uh, it does great for our social media, but for long, drawn-out projects, uh, long projects, and things like that, I would still recommend getting a laptop. But if you had, if I, if I had to choose between a laptop and a MacBook then I probably would choose, uh, it would depend on where I'm at in my uh, video making photography career. Most of the time, if I was just an enthusiast, I probably would choose a iPad, probably wouldn't go for this one. I would probably go for the iPad Air, um, the iPad Air, which gives you about 90% of the performance of this, uh, it even has a faster processor in it. Um, but if I was doing like super high end, super high end client work, like how we are getting into and doing now, then I would use a MacBook Pro for that, especially with the M1 chip that they just put in the new MacBook Pros. I got my wife a MacBook Air, M1 MacBook Air, and her M1 MacBook Air is faster than my MacBook Pro, and my MacBook Pro is cost considerably more than that laptop. So it's amazing that the technology that Apple has put in their new, um, their new laptops. But this is my setup that I would recommend that I use for myself and that I recommend for all content creators and social media influencers to get. Um, you got the Sony a7C, you got the 35mm 1.8, you have the 85mm 1.8, you have the 24-1.4 and the 17 to 28 Tamron. Now, if you were to ask me what lens should you get first, it would depend. I would ask you, what do you shoot mostly? If you're looking to get some really dreamy portraits, really dreamy portraits, and that's what you're going for, you want the blurry blown out background, um, blown out background, then I would recommend going for this lens as it is the cheapest lens of the bunch. Uh, the 35 mil comes in second on the cheapest end of the, of the list. I think the 35 mil 1.8 is about 750. This one is uh, 599. You can find it sometimes for 499, or you, you can even get it used for about 350, 400 bucks now. But this lens uh, for portraits, this lens for everything, uh, even though this is the most expensive lens, but this lens for everything, most definitely. If you can't afford this lens, I would re definitely recommend this lens. This lens, I wouldn't recommend. I would probably recommend this lens last, the 17 to 28. Uh, even though it's a variable aperture, or not a variable aperture, but a uh, but a zoom lens, and it has a constant aperture of a 2.8. 
Um, I would still probably recommend this one last because of the 2.8 aperture and it's very, very wide. So if you're a vlogger and that is mainly what you do, yes, go for this lens. But if you're just someone that is uh, wanting to do something like an all around kind of type lens, this is not the lens that you want to go for because even at the longest end of the lens, it is still wide. And so, uh, but I would recommend probably in the order I would go, um, I would go for the money, I would go 85, 35, 24, and then this lens. I would recommend this last in any situation, but uh, if you're going for the best all around lens, 24 mil 1.4 would most definitely be my recommendation. And so that's it right now for in this segment of Tech Talk. Uh, I plan to do it more videos like this. I know I haven't done any in a while, but as you can see, uh, the background color is a little different. I may give a tour of my studio setup. We're not completely finished yet, but we have gotten it to a point where we're able to do some videos again. And so uh, it took a lot of work for us to get, to get what done, what we had to get done. And so hopefully you'll be able to see me doing more videos here real soon. All right, you all, until next time, peace.